So we are going to use fx modules to prove that a matrix is invertible if and only if its determinant is non-zero. Now this video is gonna rely a lot on the previous videos that I've made, so I would recommend checking the playlist in the description if you wanna get the background. We know that every matrix corresponds to a finitely generated torsion fx module. And by the structure theorem, we can write that module as a direct sum of fx mod a bunch of polynomials f of x. So we're gonna have a direct sum of a bunch of these quotient modules for different fx's down here. Now again, check the video in the description for this. The characteristic polynomial of a matrix, which is the determinant of xi minus a, this is equal to the product of these invariant factors f of x in the quotients of the fx module. Now in particular, I wanna ask what happens if we plug in x equals zero. Now when we were talking about the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, we said you can't just plug in a matrix to this x here and say, for example, the determinant of a i minus a equals zero. But you can plug in a number because this ends up being a polynomial in the variable x. So when we plug in x equals zero, that's the same thing as taking the determinant of zero i minus a. So if we plug in x equals zero, we're going to get the determinant of negative a. And that's going to be plus or minus the determinant of a, where the sign depends on the dimension of the matrix, whether it's n by n with n even or n odd. And on the other side, if we plug in x equals zero, we're going to get the product of f of zero. So what we wanna ask now is what happens if the determinant is zero? So if the determinant of a is equal to zero, then that means the product of these elementary divisors, f of zero, is also going to equal zero. Now these are just a bunch of polynomials. So if we take a polynomial and plug in zero, the only way we can get zero back as the result is if this polynomial has a factor of x in it. So if the determinant of a equals zero, that means that the fx module m corresponding to the matrix A needs to have a factor of x. Now, in particular, that doesn't mean that it needs to have one of the direct summands being just f of x mod x. But it does need to have a factor of x, and in general, that factor is going to look like x to the power of n because these are the factors that we can't split up because we can't write this as a direct sum of fx mod smaller powers of x. So we've shown that if the determinant of a is zero, then the fx module corresponding to that matrix needs to have one of the quotients with the form fx mod x to the n. So what does this mean? Well, let's think about what the elements of fx mod x to the n are. In particular, consider the element x to the n minus one. What happens when we apply the matrix to this element of the fx module? Well, remember when we're looking at an fx module, multiplying by the matrix is the same thing as multiplying by x. What is x times x to the n minus one? Of course, that's x to the n, but if we quotient by x to the n, then this is equal to zero. We have an element where when we multiply by the matrix, we get zero, but x to the n minus one is not equal to zero. So we've just shown that in this fx module, multiplication by x is not injective because of course, x times zero equals zero, but x times x to the n minus one is also zero. And if multiplying by the matrix is not injective, then the matrix has no inverse. So we just showed if the determinant of a matrix is zero, then multiplying by the matrix is not an injection on the fx module because it has a non-zero kernel and therefore the matrix is not invertible. And we just showed that for a single part of the direct sum. But of course, if we have a direct sum of a bunch of things, we can just put zero in the rest of the direct sum ends and then x to the n minus one in that one component. And again, we have an element that's non-zero. When we multiply by x, it equals zero.
therefore the matrix is not invertible. The other option is what happens if this determinant is not equal to zero, so that this product of f of zero is not equal to zero. Well, this can only happen if there are no factors of x's in that characteristic polynomial, which means that none of the factors are going to look like x to the n. They're always going to look like x to the n minus some other stuff. But this other stuff has an important property, which is think about what would happen if this other stuff all had a factor of x in it. Well, if all of this stuff has a factor of x in it, then this entire polynomial in the quotient has a factor of x, which means the characteristic polynomial also has a factor of x. If the determinant of a is not zero, we know that's not true. So that means that this other stuff can't all have a factor of x. In other words, it needs to have a non-zero constant term. There's going to be a minus a zero at the end, which is just a constant. And what that means is if we take x times x to the n minus 1, we're going to get x to the n, which contains a 0, and then plus some other stuff. Now I want to use this fact to show that multiplying x onto an element of this fx module will never give us 0. So let's consider an arbitrary element of this module. It's going to be some polynomial of degree n minus 1. So we'll have c n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus c n minus 2 x to the n minus 2 plus dot 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 plus c1 x plus c0. Now when we multiply by x, that's going to give us, first of all, we'll have c n minus 1 x to the n. And that's going to be this part over here. So c n minus 1 times a0 plus dot 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 plus, now here, if we multiply by x, we're going to get c n minus 2 x to the n minus 1, and so on. All the exponents are just going to increase by 1, so we get c1 x squared plus c0 x. The question is, can this equal 0? What happens if this equals 0? Well, what is the constant term in this polynomial? All of these things have a power of x in them. The only thing that doesn't have a factor of x is c n minus 1 a 0. And we said we know if the determinant is non-zero, a 0 is also non-zero. So this can only be equal to 0 if c n minus 1 equals 0. So this part is going to vanish. What is the factor with the power of x to the n minus 1? It's only this part because this thing is zero, and everything over here has a smaller power. So the power of x to the n minus one has a coefficient c n minus two. If this whole thing equals zero, then c n minus two has to equal zero. And we can repeat the same logic over and over. c n minus three has to be zero, c n minus four has to be zero, and so on. All of these uh, coefficients have to equal zero, which means the kernel of the map where we multiply by x is just the zero polynomial. In other words, multiplying by this matrix is an injection on the fx module as long as the constant term is non-zero. So if we have a direct sum of a bunch of these fx modules where the constant term is non-zero, so there's not a factor of x in this characteristic polynomial, then multiplying by x is always going to be an injection because the only way to get zero is if every single part of the direct sum is just the zero polynomial. So multiplying by x is an injection, which means that the corresponding matrix must be an invertible matrix if its determinant is non-zero. So if we consider a cyclic fx module like this, the kernel of multiplication by x is going to be zero if and only if the constant term is non-zero. So whether the map of multiplication by x is injective depends on whether there is a factor in the direct sum with a constant term equal to zero. And that determines whether or not there is a factor of x in the characteristic polynomial, which is related to the determinant of the matrix 
when we evaluate the characteristic polynomial at zero. So using fx modules, we have proved that a matrix is invertible if and only if its determinant is non-zero.